Welcome back to the AV.com YouTube channel. We recently put out a video on the Bowers & Wilkins PX7 S2e when they launched. It quickly became one of our most popular videos to date, so I just want to say a big thank you to everybody at home who watched it and perhaps liked or comment or even subscribed off the back of it. The response was great to see and we were really encouraged by it. So if you do want to see more content just like this, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button below to uh, subscribe to the channel. And we're always going to be putting out more content just like this one. Today, we're back with another video on Bowers & Wilkins headphones. This time around, we've got the flagship, the premium PX8 models in, in their brand new Royal Burgundy finish. Now, we're going to get into what makes this unique colorway special in just a moment. But before we do that, we actually realized that we still had the PX7 S2Es in the studio at the same time as we now have a pair of the PX8s. So what else is there to do other than to give them a head to head to find out which are going to be the right pair for you to buy. So let's dive right into the key specs and features to give context on the two models and find out just how they differ. Starting off with the price point, the PX7 S2Es come in with an MSRP of 379, while the more flagship PX8 models come in at 599. So there's a 220 pound premium. and We're going to find out whether or not that premium is worth paying in just a moment. Following on from there, the biggest difference technically between the two headphones is that the PX8s have an upgraded driver technology. So they go from the biocellulose driver on the PX7s to a unique carbon cone driver that's said to give more mid-range detail. Again, something we're going to explore later on in more detail. See what I did there? Following on from that, there are some similarities between the headphones. So the DSP being used and the active noise cancellation is nearly identical. In fact, Bowers & Wilkins very clearly state that the PX7 S2e take inspiration from the PX8s when it comes to the DSP on board. So it's no surprise that they are very similar in that kind of category. With regards to battery life, they are identical. So they both feature a 30 hour battery life with a quick charge feature that gives you seven hours of playback from just 15 minutes. I found this feature incredibly useful. I wish all headphones had it. Uh, and it really makes me want to pick up a pair of Bowers & Wilkins headphones. It is absolutely game changing when you need to go somewhere on the fly. They both operate on Bluetooth 5.2 and support all of the various Aptex adaptive codecs that you could ever possibly need. Try saying that one a few times. Where they do start to differ is in weight. So the PX8s actually feature quite a few differences in build quality and materials used. So as a result, they are ever so slightly heavier. And we're going to get into whether or not that affects wearability and comfort again in just a moment. The final area where they do have some differences is in terms of aesthetic and color options. While they do look similar, the PX8s come in an anthracite black as well as a cloud gray. There's also two additional colors. They do a forest green as well as a blue finish. Whereas the PX8s, they center more around the leather finish. So they do a black leather, a tan and gray leather, as well as the all new royal burgundy finish. Now, I do think that this finish in particular will divide opinions. I don't think that it's going to be for everybody. However, I personally think that it looks fantastic in the flesh. I would encourage anyone to go uh, on the high street and have a quick look at a pair of them because they really do look fantastic in person. I really like the choice of burgundy color that they've used and just how well it contrasts against the gold finished metal uh, that's all over the rest of the headphones. You know, I think it looks great. Uh, I just think it's going to be one that does divide opinions, but I have a feeling they're already going to know that. So now that we've done a quick comparison on all of the key specs and features between the two models, I want to dive in a little bit more detail with three specific categories. The first one is going to be build quality and comfort. The second one, of course, is going to be sound quality. And the third one is going to be additional features where we're going to cover things like active noise cancelling, DSP and app control and all of those good things. So let's start off by talking about the build quality and comfort. So the PX8s definitely are an upgrade over the PX7 S2Es in terms of the materials used. Getting into it in a little bit more detail, the PX8s feature a metal headband structure. So this is probably one of the biggest differences. It's an upgrade from just a plastic one that you'll find on the PX7. So it does add a little bit more weight, but certainly it makes the headphones feel much more robust in the hands. You know, it's it's got a nice snap to it, a good amount of give, but they just feel a little bit more solid and robust in the hands. The next noticeable difference comes in the headband material used. So the PX7s feature a faux leather on the bottom and a uh, fabric that goes across the top. Whereas the PX8s get an upgrade to what Bowers & Wilkins call Nappa leather, and that is featured on both the top and bottom of the headband. So uh, in my opinion, the difference here, it's not so much that there's a comfort difference. I actually find both to be really equally comfortable on the headband side. Um, it's more a tactile feel. You know, the, it, you can just feel that the leather on these PX8s is more premium than that found on the PX7 S2Es. 
Um, but at the same time, you might find that you prefer the look of the fabric that goes across the top than the, than the leather on the top. So in that sense, I think it's gonna come down to just personal taste. Um, although it certainly is more premium and a higher quality leather that is found on the PX8s. Following on from the headband, we move down to the ear cups themselves. So again, the PX8s are featuring their Nappa leather on the ear cups, uh, as well as a memory foam cushion, whereas the PX7 S2Es has the same memory foam cushion, uh, but it is just that faux leather that goes around the ear cups. Uh, I don't really think you notice a difference in terms of how they feel on the ear. The only thing that I will say is that um, when you put on a pair of the PX7s after wearing a pair of the PX8, I felt as if the driver material that goes just over the drivers here on the inside of the ear cups, it felt ever so slightly closer to my ear. And when I went back to the PX8s, it just felt a little bit more spacious on the inside. So when you're actually wearing them on your head, you know, the drivers don't feel quite as closed in. It feels a little bit more spacious, which I think adds ever so slightly to the comfortable-ness uh, <laughs> of the headphones, uh, you know, and long-term wearability. So overall, they don't feel noticeably different, um, but there are a couple of little areas that might swing it for you. Uh, the PX7s are perfectly comfortable, but the PX8s just step it up a notch ever so slightly. So with build quality and comfort out of the way, I'm gonna get straight to the elephant in the room, sound quality. How do these two pairs of headphones compare when it comes to audio performance? Well, actually, I found them to not be quite as distant as I would have thought given the two price points. And rather than that being any negative to throw at the PX8s, actually, I think it is a huge testament to what Bowers & Wilkins have managed to achieve with their brand new PX7 S2e models. They set out to make them much more closer in performance to the PX8s, with particular reference to the onboard DSP and 24-bit algorithms that they use. They're tuned to sound much more like the PX8s. Uh, they have taken lots of learnings from the more flagship model. Uh, and I think that really shows, to be totally truthful about it. You know, I think they sound great. And if you're talking price and performance, the PX7 S2Es definitely win in my opinion. However, with that said, when you listen to the two headphones side by side, you know, if you do a, literally an A-B comparison like we did earlier on in the day, they you can definitely hear some differences. So first of all, I think the PX8s are much more detailed in the mid-range. And what I mean by this is, you know, if you're listening to, um, you know, some rock music or anything with, that's quite thick in the mid-range, lots of guitar layers, you can much more easily pick out the different layers of instruments, you know, even if they are all guitars, the different amps that are used on all of the different layers. Uh, there's just much more definition to it. It also adds more clarity to the vocal as a lot of that sits in the mid-range. So, you know, I think from that point of view, they, they sound less cluttered, they sound more open and with a bit more punch and detail in that mid-range. And then in the higher end of things, I felt like the PX8s have a better dynamic range, which is a huge thing for me. You know, personally, I think dynamic range is the be-all and end-all uh, metric to measure by because I think uh, when you start getting into elements of compression and the units that you're using, coloring the sound in certain ways, you're getting further and further away from how the artist intended the songs and music to sound, uh, which is ultimately what I'm chasing with, uh, you know, with kind of my musical journey. So for me, again, they sound much more open in the high frequencies. Um, and I think that that is probably the two areas that they differ the most. And to summarize it, you know, I think the PX7 S2Es are going to be fine for most people. But if you are that kind of person that just wants the best performance, there is no doubt in my mind that the PX8 sound better. They absolutely do. And with particular reference to mid-range detailing and the openness and dynamic range within the higher frequencies. So with the two big categories out of the way, which is build quality and comfort, as well as sound quality, I wanted to look at some of the additional features that you get with a pair of headphones like these from Bowers and Wilkins. So first thing I'm gonna look at is active noise cancellation. So to remove any doubt, my experience has been that they are identical in terms of active noise cancellation performance. They feature the same microphone configurations to create the active noise cancelling effect, as well as the same options on the app. So you can either have them in a full active noise cancellation mode, uh, a pass-through mode where the external microphones feed information back into the headphones. For example, if you're walking down the street and there's a, a, uh, an ambulance going by with its sirens on, the, the headphones will pick up that there is a potential hazard around and play that information into your ears to save you from walking out in front of an ambulance that's speeding by. Uh, and finally, they then just have a noise cancelling off mode on the app too. So those are the three options that you have. 
Uh, and as I said, from what I could tell, the performance was the same, whether or not I was on a phone call, whether or not I was outside, or whether or not I was listening to music, you know, inside. So uh, yeah, those were my experiences. So with active noise cancelling out of the way, I wanted to talk about some of the areas where both models actually perform the same. So to start off with connectivity, uh, they both feature support for Bluetooth 5.2, as well as all of the various Aptex codecs. So if you want to make use of high resolution streaming platforms for mobile devices, you absolutely can do, and you can do it on either model. Both models also feature wear detection sensors. So when you remove them from your head, the if you were listening to music, the playback would stop, which preserves battery life. And again, you know, it's just a nice feature to have. Uh, as it means that you have to charge your headphones less if you do take them on and off uh, very frequently. Cool quality wise and microphone wise, again, they are exactly the same, at least in terms of our tests. Uh, I know that they both featured two external microphones on the outside to pick up your voice while you're speaking. Uh, and we did test this on a couple of different phone calls, uh, both indoor and outdoor. And yeah, the performance from what we could tell was almost exactly the same. So uh, it's just another area where there isn't too much difference between them. So if that was something that you were looking for, they are the same, you know, there's, there's not really much else to add there and the final thing that i do want to touch on is just the overall finish of the two products uh, so as i mentioned before the px8s feature more premium build quality materials uh, such as the metal uh, headband support that goes throughout the headphone uh, this actually extends to the back of the ear cups too so it is metal on the back of the ear cups and it's actually diamond cut so it has this really nice edging to it uh, as well as the Bowers and Wilkins logo is actually raised on the back of it too, which when you run your finger along it, just feels super premium. It's just a nice thing to point out. You know, it's another point where they differ. Um, it's not going to add anything to sound quality, but certainly holding and using the headphones, they do feel more premium. Going back to the headband material, which on the PX8s received an upgrade to what they call Nappa leather. I just wanted to say that, you know, I think that this is going to add longevity to the product. If you're looking for a pair of headphones that are going to stand the test of time and, you know, you just want to buy once and you want to keep them forever, then certainly the real Nappa leather that's found on the PX8s is going to do that. It's going to last. And I think that if that's one of the other considerations for which ones you want to buy, then certainly longevity wise, the PX8s are the way to go. So that's it. I wanted to keep this video nice and short and top level, just going over some of the key differences, but also some of the main areas where they, where they do perform very similarly. My overall feeling is, you know, with regards to which one someone should buy, I think most people are going to be fine with the PX7 S2Es. The sound quality is great. The comfort's great. And obviously they look very similar. So there isn't that much in it from that department. Um, you know, and again, I think that is just a testament to what Bowers and Wilkins have managed to fit into the PX7 S2Es at this price point. I think they vastly outperform pretty much anything at a similar price. Uh, and for me, I think generally that is the way that most people should and will go. However, with that said, uh, the PX8s are definitely the better sounding option. They're more comfortable uh, and they do look and feel much more premium. So if those are things that are really, really big to you in your decision making, if you do just want the best sounding headphones that are the most comfortable and will last the longest uh, time, then there is no doubt in my mind that the PX8s are better and perhaps that is the way that you should go. Um, but again, for most people, I really think the PX7 S2Es are going to be more than enough. Their performance is excellent uh, and that is essentially how I would summarize it. So I hope that that's been helpful. Uh, if I've missed anything off or if you still have any further questions, please feel free to leave us a comment in the comment section below and we'll be more than happy to get back to you on that. Uh, until next time, I've been Tim. Thank you for watching.